A documentary about the deadly bonfire collapses in theaters in Central Texas now. The film's title, 13th Man, is a tribute to John Comstock. As you heard earlier tonight, he was expected to be the 13th casualty of the collapse, but he survived. Director Charlie Min tells us it's a film from the heart. A sold out crowd filed into the premier cinema for the highly anticipated showing of the 13th Man, first in Bryan and then statewide. Filmmaker Charlie Min came up with the idea for the documentary while visiting Texas A&M as a guest speaker in 2011. Well, these students are talking to me about the bonfire tragedy to the point where two students walked me over to the memorial. The memorial was built at the five year anniversary in 2004. So I get here in 2011 at A&M and I think that's when it really showed me that Aggie spirit where the students are so bonded that two of them wanted me to see it for myself. Men reached out to John Comstock and others to help tell the story of that tragic day and the 12 Aggies who died. You have students on campus that weren't even alive when that happened. While they may be following the tradition of going out to the memorial at 245, I don't think they really understand um, what that event was like for everybody that, that was alive at the, and a student at that time. While his goal was to make the film to educate the public, men learned something in the process. I've never studied a, a university so unique like A&M. More than 20 theaters across Texas will show the 13th man. The Aggie spirit, as all Aggies know, can never be told because of those 12 students who lost their lives, they'll never be forgotten. And that's why I came out here today to watch it. The Aggie code of honor is you don't lie. There's no lying in this movie. It's an honest film from the heart. Capturing the Aggie spirit that was dealt a crushing blow, but banded together an entire state to become stronger. When the bonfire fell in November of 1999, Reverend Larry Kruger was a pastor with the Campus Ministers Association at Texas A&M. You don't know what to say. You just kind of put your hand on the shoulders and, and pretty soon you just cry with them because that's all you can do. Reverend Kruger witnessed firsthand how the Aggie community was suffering and in need of faith. You could see people were dead. I mean, there's, you know, that's bodies under the white sheets that are, they're just bodies lying on the ground and they're, they're covered in white sheets. I didn't bother to count at that point because I was just gonna go see what I could do to support students. That day, law enforcement, members of the university and the school's crisis management team all gave Reverend Kruger full access behind the scenes to minister to students, parents, survivors, faculty, and even first responders. And um, a lot of emotion, a lot of tears, a lot of shock. Um, so you just stop and you pray with people. You just pray with people and just talk to them and give them encouragement from God's word as you could as, as you walked along the way. And While Reverend Kruger ministered to those who were suffering, he also had to consider the realization that some of the students he worked with directly with the Department of Student Life on campus might have been involved with the accident. But during the course of that time, some of the students that came to my chapel, uh, they had a cousin that was working bonfire. And in fact, uh, people called her queen of the bonfire. She loved it. And we couldn't account for her. And so uh, I said, where are her parents? And they said they got all the parents to the hospital. So I went to the hospital in, in Bryan. Once at the hospital, he found out Miranda Adams, the queen of the bonfire, had died from her injuries. At that point, he experienced something he had never seen before as a minister. It was the other pastor from the other church where she actually went to church. He was there by that point in time. And uh, we, we walked with her family back into the room to, to, uh, for them to confirm that was indeed their daughter. That's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. The, I, read in, I read in the Bible about weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I didn't know what that looked like until that night. At the memorial with the president of the university, Dr. Ray Bowen, Lieutenant Governor Rick Perry, and other dignitaries, Reverend Kruger was asked to speak to the morning crowd in attendance. He delivered the same message of hope and inspiration he still shares today when tragedy happens. And so I think when you go through tragedies, 
you cling, you cling to the one thing that's absolutely certain in life, and that's your faith in, in Christ. And no matter what else happens around you, that can't be shaken. Aggieland is a special place, and in its darkest hour, support and love for those impacted by the tragedy expanded beyond borders. Thank you for joining us for this special report. Good night and gig'em.